Hello everyone, this side Dr. Abhijit and now we are going to discuss about the development of the liver. So we have the foregut, right? So let us let us start with the development of the liver. Development of the liver and yeah. The liver and the gallbladder basically they arise from the foregut right so in the middle of the third week in the middle of the third week what you will see that a liver bud okay a liver bud a liver bud or it is also called as the hepatic diverticulum hepatic diverticulum basically it appears in the middle of the third week and uh, this liver butt or hepatic duct which emerges from the foregut right so you already know let us suppose this is the foregut right this is the foregut and yes from the foregut you can see that a hepatic butt is developing this is the hepatic butt or it is also called as the hepatic diverticulum or the liver part right or now if you already know this is the foregut so a liver part or hepatic diverticulum it develops it develops from the lower end of the foregut now the liver bud or the hepatic bud it will divide into two parts let us let us just try to see this now let us suppose this is the foregut this is the foregut and this is the hepatic bud right now this hepatic bud will divide into two parts right it will divide into two parts yeah one part it is called as the part it is called as the pars hepatica it is called as the pars hepatica and the lower part it is called as the pars cystica it is called as the pars cystica now remember the pars hepatica oh, let me write this the pars hepatica it is the large cranial part because it is just above the pars cystica so i can say it is the it is large okay it is the cranial part okay it is the cranial part okay which will give rise to the future liver it will give rise to future liver future liver right now liver it is both ecto uh, repeat liver it is both endodermal and mesodermal in origin right now we are talking about foregut the liver but it is coming from the foregut foregut it is yolk sac it is endodermal in origin we will talk about some parts of the liver that are coming from septum transversum right and septum transversum it is the undifferentiated lateral plate mesoderm that is the mesodermal in origin so liver is uh, having origin from both the parts endodermal also and mesodermal also right so this large cranial part will give rise to the future liver apart from that this pars cystica the pars cystica it is small caudal part Okay, it is the small caudal part just below it is the tail part right it will give rise to future gallbladder it will give rise to the future gallbladder right and yes and the common stock which you can see between this pars hepatica and pars cystica 
this common stock will give rise to common bile duct right it will give rise to the common bile duct it will give rise to the common bile duct so the liver butt it will divide into two the upper part it is called as the parsipatica the lower part it is called as parsistica upper part will differentiate into the complete liver lower part it will differentiate into the gallbladder and the connecting stock or the common stock for these two butts will form the common bile duct later right now remember the pars hepatica the pars hepatica basically it invades the septum okay which septum it is the septum transversum i have already told you septum transversum okay so the pars hepatica will invade into the septum transversum and will divide into right and left branches right it will divide into right and left branches so it is simply like this if you just want to see over here so yes this is the foregut tube right now this is the connecting stock i could say right the common bile duct now this is the gallbladder which will be formed by the part cystica and yes we have these two branches yeah the right and the left branches right the right branch and the left branch and basically this cyst it is invading into this septum transversum and dividing into right and left branches now each branch divides repeatedly to form the hepatic cells or the columns of the hepatic cells of each one of the lobe of the liver so this will reply uh, they will know they will divide okay constantly right so remember each branch divides repeatedly okay it divides repeatedly to form columns of hepatic cells of one lobe of the liver one lobe of the liver right so yes we have these whatever i'm drawing right now it is the columns of the hepatic cells of liver columns of the hepatic cells of the liver now the columns of the hepatic cells inside the septum transversum okay they will start meeting the vitelline veins right the vitelline veins and uh, no breaking them these columns into sinusoids okay so these liver columns okay these columns will be broken down okay so these columns of the hepatic cells so yes these columns of the hepatic cells what they will do they will uh, inside the septum transversum they will meet the vitelline veins right they will meet the vitelline veins and it will break them it will break them into liver sinusoids liver sinusoids right so it will break them into liver sinusoids so yes we have these sinusoids over here so yes this is the liver sinusoids okay now these liver sinusoids basically they intervene in between the cords of the liver cells they intervene in between the cords of the liver cells so this is how the liver is created now remember <coughs> you already know one thing over here that suppose this is the ectoderm 
this is the endoderm right this is the endoderm and in between we have the mesoderm right in between we have this mesoderm over here this mesoderm okay we have the lateral plate mesoderm over here okay this is the mesoderm mesoderm is basically of three types the paraaxial mesoderm intermediate mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm so just talking about this lateral plate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm which is undifferentiated undifferentiated it is called as septum transversum it is called as the septum transversum it is called as the septum transversum right undifferentiated lateral placed mesoderm it is septum transversum and remember it gives rise to it gives rise to stroma and capsule of the liver stroma and capsule of the liver it gives rise to the stroma and the capsule of the liver now also along with the stroma and capsule of the liver it will give rise to the ligaments of the liver okay it will give rise to the ligaments of the liver and you already know the ligaments of the liver right one it is the falciform ligament connecting the liver to the anterior abdominal wall falciform ligament and we also have the lesser omentum right the lesser omentum which is connecting the liver to the stomach connecting the liver to the stomach right and remember the right and the left hepatic ducts basically they will develop from the right and left hepatic branches only okay of the pars hepatica so together they will form the common bile duct okay which opens into the uh, okay which opens actually first into the interior wall of the duodenum okay now later as a result of rotation the stomach uh, as a result of rotation of the stomach what will happen the opening of the common bile duct it basically migrates to the posterior medial aspect and uh, like of the second wall of uh, second part of the duodenum so this was about the embryology of the liver thank you